There have been two problems so far in Friedberg in suspense having to do with cosets and quotient spaces. And so in this video, I'm going to go through some reading that I did in uh, Halmes, uh, Huffman and Kuhn's, and in the Axler, of course, the new edition. But first, I'm going to show uh, I'm going to show the uh, the problems themselves that triggered all this. So uh, problem 1.331 in um, in FIS has to do with cosets, and then also there is a quotient uh, space item at the end. So it's all about understanding how cosets uh, are lined up, and then what a quotient space is. Then uh, later on in the book, and I'm not going to go through the problems. I'm just mentioning where they are. There is also a uh, problem in section 1.735 which has to do with quotient spaces, okay? And so it's all about, you get a basis that goes through uh, K vectors in W, and then there's a bigger um, vector space, of which W is a subspace, that goes to M, but includes the one to K, and you're supposed to prove that the K plus one to N are cosets uh, plus, the, plus W, and it's a basis for the quotient space, and then derive a formula for the dimension. Now, a, um, one of my wonderful subscribers sent me, put in the comments, a, uh, a uh, proof. So it's in the comments uh, for one of the FIS uh, videos. I think it's in one of the FIS videos. Uh, a proof for this, this last problem, 1.635. I've read it. I wanted to consume it better, but I realized uh, th this, the process of making this video so it made me decide for sure that I will be using Axler. I've already gotten the fourth edition. And so I did take the time to go through and read in Halmas about quotient spaces. Uh, Halmas sets up a very interesting special case where the, your M vector space is just the, uh, the, the X line. And then all the cosets are all the lines that are parallel to the, the, the X axis, but are not crossing zero. So of course, this explains that a coset is not, um, the, the, set, <clears throat> the, the space of all cosets is not a vector space because it doesn't have the zero vector. And of course, Halmas also explains in detail uh, the algebra of playing with various cosets uh, and then sets up all kinds of examples. I'm not gonna go in, in it into detail because I'm gonna mention the book and then I think somebody who's interested should read it themselves. But I just wanted to highlight that finally I have figured a way to use Halmas, uh, Huffman and Kuhns, and Axler while I do FIS, and then looking forward to at some point doing Axler. More from Halmas, then Huffman and Kuhns uses uh, congruences because uh, the classes, for example, mod four, zero is uh, zero, four, eight, minus four, minus eight. Uh, then when you go to the one, two, and three, those are all cosets. And they don't include zero. So one is five, nine, uh, one, minus, minus four. I'm not doing it correctly, but either way, uh, I'm doing it from memory, so I don't want to mess it up. Either way, the way Huffman and Kuhns does it, uh, they do it with mod. And that's actually a second way to look at it that is, I think, even more helpful and complements uh, what Halmas does. Then in the case of... Uh, Axler, Axler's got a really nice diagram with actual numbers uh, and, and explains what a coset is. Now the only issue with Axler is that he decided to use the correct term, it is the correct term, for a, a, for a coset which is called a translate. And sure enough I dug this up out of Google, the, the AI thing that it has, and translate is the same as a coset. So, but in the case of Axler, he uses translate. So now let's just go quickly through the books. And again, I'm not going step by step, but I just want to get the point across in this video that these three books complement themselves really, really well when it comes to quotient spaces and cosets. So of course, what I just mentioned for Halmas, uh, it reads cryptic until you write it all out. So actually I'm finding Halmas to be very readable, uh, something that I've wanted to do for a long time. And so he does use an example, uh, and that was very helpful. 
Then when I get to uh, Hoffman and Kuhn's, it's uh, in the in the case of Hoffman and Kuhn's, and I'm saying Kuhn's. I don't know if it's Kuhnsy, but I, I'm going to say Kuhn's. In the case of Hoffman and Kuhn's, uh, quotient spaces are in an appendix. And of course, what I just mentioned that I took notes about, it has a, a mod, uh, the W, uh, the main space, uh, very well described. So I found this very, very useful. And so things, for example, like uh, if you have, uh, if you're operating on W and you have something that's said, for example, W plus W, W plus W is W because if you think of the X line, and you drop another X line on top of it, a copy, those sets are completely the same. So you might as well say W. And actually, any number of adding uh, logically W's, it's just W. And then whatever you have the, the alpha, the coset, that's outside the W. It's, it's a vector that's pointing. You can have it as a vector that's pointing to another line. And then you can do algebra with it. So that really helped. And then finally, in the case of Axler, I could have read more in Axler. The main thing that I got out of reading Axler was uh, I encountered a new term. I got a feel for how this book reads, and I really like it. Uh, but there was more. Axler had even more for quotient spaces that I did not read these pages. Because since I'm going to read it later, I just wanted to keep going. I don't want to be too sidetracked. But basically... Uh, between these three books, what I've shown, there's enough for somebody to understand uh, cosets, also called translates, and uh, quotient spaces uh, to be used in advanced linear algebra.